Hi, I'm Chol Jun, and I'm a PhD student at KAIST. Today, I'd like to introduce DOLTEST, a downlink negative testing framework for LTE devices. This is a joint work with Sangook, Bomsok, Jiho, Eunyu, Insu, and Yongdae. LTE is still important and will be important for next years at least. And the security of LTE is very important. Let me give you a brief background of LTE before explaining our problem. UE, your smartphone, has two processors, an application processor, which runs mobile OS such as Android or iOS, and a baseband processor, which handles LTE communication. It communicates with eNodeB, the base station, and EPC, the core network, and provides cellular services. There are two main protocols in the control plane, RRC, which is for communication with eNodeB, and NAS, which is for communication with EPC. The cellular standard organization, 3GPP, has a testing standard called conformance specification. Unfortunately, it mostly deals with positive test cases. In other words, it checks if valid messages are correctly handled. What about negative test cases? In other words, checking if invalid or prohibited messages are properly handled. The conformance spec contains only 14 negative testing cases out of 993 test scenarios. What does it mean? Exception handling may not be done correctly. However, there are multiple challenges for doing negative testing. First, how do we enumerate all prohibited or invalid messages that are also security critical? Second, UEN networks send different messages depending their states. Previous dynamic testing papers focused on stateless cases only. Third, understanding spec specification is difficult. Therefore, making an oracle, in other words, Knowing the correct behavior is difficult. To overcome these challenges, we designed dull tests. The first step, we manually read the specification many, many times. Through this one-time effort, we define new security abstracted states and construct guidelines. These are our rules for generating test cases and becomes inputs for the next step. In step two, using these guidelines, we generate test cases. We have 1,848 test cases. Then, for each device and for each test case, we move the states of EPC, eNodeB, and phone to particularly required states and send the test message over the air. We record every behaviors and responses of the test UEs. Note that, as an initial oracle, we assume that a UE should silently draw all the test messages. Finally, for each test result, we analyzed the correct behavior. We looked up specs and even discussed with 3GPP people to find a standard compliant behaviors. Based on them, we, we refine our oracle and investigate the bugs and security implications. UE and network behave differently depending on message authentication status of UE. And the security context is established based on the status. While establishing a LTE connection, UE needs to have security context in NAS layer first and then RRC layer. Therefore, as you can see in the picture, there are four states. This definition has two advantages. First, they can reflect two new attacker models, a man-in-the-middle attacker and a signal injection attacker. Secondly, states in one layer are equivalent in terms of security. Therefore, we may be able to reduce test cases. Next, we generated test messages that are invalid or prohibited by specification. 
To do this, we searched every statement re related to message authentication from RRC and NAS specifications. Then, we generated a guideline, our rule that specifies message types and contents to generate test cases. These are full guideline we generated. To address ambiguities in the spec, we over approximated our test messages. Specification cannot describe every details. Thus, we also altered unspecified fields in the messages. Let me give you an example. Network can send identity request message to the device to obtain users' various identities. And the specification says like this, except the messages below, no NAS signaling message shall be processed by the UE unless the network has established secure exchange of NAS messages. Do you understand what this means? <laughs> this means multiple things in one sentence. When no keys established, user can only reply permanent user identity, IMSI. For other identities, UE should reply only when user has a shared key and message is authenticated. So in the guideline below, we fix message type as identity request and choose every identity parameters except IMG. Then we filled out the rest of the fields as the wildcards. As a result, from this guideline, we can get over approximated test cases, number of states times possible security header types times identity parameter times two kinds of invalid max, plain and random max. So we implement dual test by modifying SRS LTE, which is open source LTE stack. We added about 9,000 of lines of code. Left figure is the test setup of the dual test. When the test UE is connected, it moves the UE state to the target states and sends the test messages. We fully open sourced the dual test, so please refer to our repository. Using dual tests, we tested 43 cellular devices from five major baseband manufacturers, Qualcomm, Exynos, MediaTek, HiSilicon, and Intel. As a result, we could find 26 implementation flaws, and 22 were new. We dis disclosed every implementation flaws to the manufacturers, and most of them are patched. This is the full results of our experiments, and these vulnerabilities are state dependent, as you can see in the paper. For details, please refer to our paper. Here's our findings. We found some interesting manufacturer dependent flaws, five NAS integrity bypass at every Qualcomm baseband, and two RC integrity bypass problem at every Exynos baseband. Also, there were device specific flaws, such as accepting null integrity algorithm, EIA0, and sending measurement reports before security activation at Galaxy S10 with Exynos baseband, and ACA bypass at iPhone 6S with Qualcomm baseband. Also, every MediaTek, Exynos, and some Qualcomm baseband did not check integrity for NAS identity request message. Note that these flaws are security critical. Multiple attacks can be launched exploiting these bugs. The attacker with no valid cryptographic keys can change network name and time, inject arbitrary SMS messages with arbitrary number, eavesdrop or manipulate data traffic, or leak the location of victim. Plus, we found that deviant behaviors are also enable the device finger fingerprinting. At last, there were some interesting experiences during bug reports. We found an old bug reappearing in a new device. Also, latest firmware included a new bug. Finally, MediaTek were not communicating well. So, we have shown that there are only a few negative test cases in conformance specification to test the UE. 
we implemented DOLTEST, a negative testing framework, and found 26 implementation flaws from 43 test devices. Also, we found that new product or even firmware patching can bring on new bugs. Thus, we believe that frequent negative testing is required to check the logical bugs. Also, we recommend 3GPP to include much more negative test cases on the conformance specification. Thank you for listening.